Joining us in the studio today is Shagun Agbaje, CEO at Guarantee Trust Bank, to run us through those numbers and what to expect going forward. Thanks a lot, Shagun, for joining us on the show today. It's my pleasure. First of all, um, let's talk about those top line numbers. Gross earnings up 11% for the first half, but um, many analysts are pointing to a decline on a quarter on quarter basis. Since there was some pressure in the um, second quarter, can you just run us through the big issues there? Well, Quite frankly, um, we're quite happy, or at least I'm happy with the results so far, and we tend not to look at things on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and try and look at it more on an annual basis. Yes, there was some margin pressure coming into the second quarter, but nothing that we believe we can't handle. I think the significant thing for us and the difference in the second quarter over the first quarter is that you will see that we've taken time again to clean up our loan book. So you'll see that we've taken our general loan loss provision. We were also able to clean out probably our most problematic loan. And so we've also hit the PL by that. Um, we've managed our net interest margin, even in the face of margin pressure, we've kept it at about 8.1%. So. Mm. We're, we're reasonably happy with what has happened in that quarter and for the whole half of year. Mm. And of course, you just mentioned about general provisions. That is something that is, is happening for GT because uh, the fact that your results are audited. It's not something that we've seen with the other banks. And to some extent, it might, other banks' might, results might actually be flattering in a sense. Well, what you say about well that? we'll have to ask them. <laughs> At least since mine are audited, you can see the general loan loss provision is there. We all have to take general loan loss this year. So by the end of the year, 31st of December, you'll see that coming through in everybody else's books. All right, let's talk a bit about um, the plans for the future. We, we know that there are plans to sell your subsidiaries. Can you give us an update on that? Yes, we're almost done, really. Um, when I look at the subsidiaries, we sold GT registrars, we sold GT assets. GT asset was a management buyout. We sold GT assurance. That should be concluded by October. We're just waiting for regulatory approvals. Okay. Hopefully, that will bring something around three billion to the PNL by mm. the time we're done. So by the end of October, we expect all subsidiary sales to be over. But end of October, that means fourth quarter then, so it's yes. not likely to... to no, we might not see it in third, third quarter. quarter, but we'll definitely see it by December 31st. All right, talk a bit about um, asset quality. We've seen your NPL ratio improve significantly, but it seems on, in, on the second quarter there was an uptick in provisions. Can you just talk us through that? Yes, NPL's at 3.6, NPL's total is at about 3.6, but we had some money and we had some profit and we decided, like most banks should clean out your loan book completely where you have income that you think is strong like I mentioned we had one loan that's been quite troublesome and we decided to clean it up with the stronger earnings we had in the first half of year mm. um, I believe that we've gone from about five to eight troublesome loans at the end of 08 to probably one or two now so significant progress has been made and on the back of strong earnings we've been able to take our MPLs mm. right. and talk us through plans for mobile banking for GT um, we're hearing that you likely to be trailblazers in that respect. Can you give us a sense of where you are on mobile banking? Okay, mobile banking, the pilot is done with MTN and we're one of the 11, so we're going to full roll out after looking at everything. Mobile banking represents some of what I would say is that we've been putting in the oven for the future. Retail will become a strong part of our lives. Mobile banking is a retail product. Mm you will begin to see that come out and i think in the next two to three years it will be clearer to people why we've done things like mobile banking why we're having the card business mm -hmm. why we will be having the pos business and um yes we expect mobile banking to be a very successful product for us in the retail landscape right you just mentioned that retail should be a big part of your future um, but we do know that on the lending side, you are very skewed to corporate. Give us a sense of how your strategy is likely to evolve, more so with your views on how the economy is playing out in Nigeria right now. Well, if I tell everything, then I'd be telling my competitors all I'm doing. But we will play retail quite aggressively. You will see today retail is already quite important. It's about 38% of our deposits, <coughs> excuse me, probably about 11% of our loan books. So we are pretty... Mm big retail bank but you will see that it will become more important for us to fund our high end mm. we will continue to put our loans in the high end but we will do our, a lot of our deposit funding out of the low end so that we can keep the net interest margin where it is which is about eight percent which is kind of where we like and then what about africa uh, we know that you are already present in a few countries in west africa 
We've seen a, lot, a few other banks in Nigeria being a lot more aggressive in terms of their um, geographical footprint across the continent. How is GT Bank looking at Africa and the Africa strategy as a whole? We like Africa, but we've been a little more deliberate than a lot of our competitors. We took Anglophone West Africa first, and we're now done with that. Every franchise we have in Anglophone West Africa today is P&L positive. Before the end of this year, we'll open Ivory Coast, which means we'll now be in Francophone West Africa. We will then probably take the economic zones in Africa, and we'll take probably one country in each economic zone, what we like to refer as high-impact countries, and then that's probably how we'll move into Africa. I think that with the strength we have in Nigeria, we will definitely be a very strong African, a dominant African player in about five years. And all the best with that plan. Thank you so much.